how would it feel to you if I tell you right now that the person that is on your mind can be yours? You can literally marry them and be the love of their life. How would you feel right now? Before you judge me and think that I'm giving you some black magic tricks or some witchcraft which will help you to get your person back on their knees and come crawling towards you, it's nothing like that. Don't you dare to think of such things. Welcome back to my channel. This is Isha Rajput and for those who are new, I talk about a lot of assumption, law of attraction and manifestation. And today's video is specifically is about law of assumption. If you are interested in these, I would love to have you here. So today's video is specifically about how Neville Goddard tells us about how can you manifest your specific person as your life partner, the dream boy or the dream girls, or the dream girl of your life, not girls. We are not into polygamy or polyandry. So this is dream girl. I'm not suggesting you anything like that. So how can we literally manifest that person into our life? Let us start the video. So the first thing today is I am going to share a radio lecture of Neville Goddard on how to manifest a specific person into your life as your spouse or your partner or your husband or your wife. For a better hearing experience, wear headphones and we will discuss it after listening to it. So brace yourself and listen to it. So you try it tonight. Try it with anything in this world. The unmarried, if you desire to be married, what symbol in the world would imply that you are married? A little band in this Western world, a little band around this finger. Not around any other finger. Around this finger. It doesn't have to be the biggest aspidastra in the world. Just a plain little gold ring. If you wore it there, it would imply you're married. Sleep tonight as though you wore one. Don't put your physical thumb on it. Put your imaginary thumb on it and feel it in your imagination. You can do it. Feel a ball. Can you feel it? Then feel a piece of silk. Feel this, one after the other. Can you discriminate between all these different sensations? If you can discriminate between this and a tennis ball and a baseball and a piece of silk, then you can't discriminate between nothings. They must exist, though unseen by your eyes, they still must exist. So if I can discriminate between these unseen objects, these objects, though unseen, must be real. Well, now take that and put it there. But feel when you wear it that you are proud of the one who put it there. You don't have to see what he looks like. When it's put there, you'll be proud of his name, to bear it, and you'll be proud of him. Just put it there. You know why I know that? My wife did it. She did it. Actually, she did it. One day she was in the presence of a, a so-called sensitive. And this one said to her, why did you take off your wedding ring? She said, I am not married. Oh, she said, don't fool me. You took off your wedding ring. She said, but I did, I'm not married. She said, I'll even tell you his name. And she started off with Neb, never, never, she didn't quite get it, but she was coming very, very close to it. She was actually sensing what my wife in consciousness was feeling. When I first met her, I wanted her the very first day I knew her. I wanted to marry her. But I was entangled. Was I entangled? But by this law, I disentangle myself. Without hurting anyone, I disengage myself from all these complexities so that I could actually legitimately say, will you marry me? But in the meanwhile, she was wearing the ring. I hadn't yet put it there, but she allowed me to put it there and slept as though I had put it there. So I tell you, unmarried ladies, if you decide to be married, maybe you don't. If you do, that's the way to do it. And you'll come out of the nowhere. You don't have to go and buy anyone or try to meet the right people. Usually when you try to meet the right one, he's always the wrong one. So don't go searching. Those who go searching for love only make manifest their own lovelessness. And the loveless never find love. 
Only the loving find love and they never have to seek for it. So you fall in love, you don't have to seek for it. You draw them. They come to you. So here, this is the power of which I speak. The power of the universe, the power that created and sustains the universe is resident in you as your own wonderful human imagination. That's God. Don't forget it. I know it's difficult when man has been trained to believe in an external God. And he goes to church, he gets on his knees and he prays to an external God. And he goes home at night, maybe he does say his prayers and he gets down on his knees and he prays to an external God. All right, maybe that's a nice thing for someone to do. But I tell you, he isn't out there at all. You won't be criticized for it, but he is within you. Very personal, may I tell you. He is very, very personal. And within you. When you're told in scripture, of the rock that begot us, we are unmindful. And that seems to be all a figure of speech on how true that thing is. One night sitting in the silence, rather than an afternoon, I was thinking of nothing in particular, and suddenly before my eyes came this quartz, an enormous quartz. As I looked at it, it fragmented itself, <coughs> broke into numbless little pieces, and then it reassembled itself. As it reassembled itself, it was not into a quartz, but into a man, seated in the lotus posture. I'm looking at this man, all seated now, perfect man. As I looked at him, I'm looking at myself. Here I am, the perceiver, observing myself, seated in the lotus posture, this deep, deep meditation. And as I became aware that I'm looking at myself, it began to glow. And it glowed and glowed and glowed. When it reached the intensity of luminosity, it exploded. And then I returned to this level. <coughs> Where did I see him within me? That being is meditating this. This is but a projection of itself in the world. And when he wakes within me, completely wakes, I am he. God actually became me, that I may become God. And he's put me through all the paces, allowing me to make all the mistakes, to make a monster like the thing that I talked, talked about earlier. I made that, and I made a lovely one. And he allows it in his meditation. He is the dreamer in me. And he's dreaming this, and dreaming everything that I dream in this world. And when he awakes, this will cease to be, and I am he. And he is God. So I tell you, go out and try it. Begin tonight. I make you this promise, if you try it faithfully, you will not fail. Now that you have listened to this radio lecture, I'm going to ask you a question. My first question is, what would be the end result of manifesting that person into your life? Like, if that person that is on your mind, whosoever it is, I don't give a damn if it is a celebrity, if it's a Hollywood superstar or a Bollywood superstar, I don't care about it. There are stories from literally uh, rags to riches. There are little, literally different types of love stories where the uh, celebrities have fallen in love with their fans and they have gotten married and lived their life until death has torn them apart. So, there are stories like that. So, I'm going to ask you, what would be the end result of manifesting that person into your life? Suppose that person that you're trying to manifest, you want them to become your wife, you want them to become your husband. So, what would be the end result of them being your spouse what would be it a ring on your finger a ring on your finger okay so Neville Godard says that you don't have to imagine a big ring on your finger or, uh, or something very big solitaire on your finger no nothing like that simple gold band because now you're engaged and now you have to carry on you are literally engaged right now in your mind you don't have to assume because because it's already a part of you so it's it's like your daily routine has not changed any bit it's the same but the only thing that has changed is that there is a ring on your finger and you have married and you do nothing you do nothing you don't go out for searching the right type of people for you you don't go out to search the love of your life you just sit and allow you just sit and allow that person to come to you to come to you 
like in the lecture itself uh, neville goddard said that his wife his wife did it in order to manifest him his wife literally wore a ring on her finger but she was not married but she didn't even knew his name she was trying to uh, name him she was very close because she believed in it so much that she was trying to name him and she was very close to him like she was naming him neb or never and in the end she manifested neville because she believed in law of assumption so much she had faith in him that yes i am married to the man of my dreams and the day neville godard met his wife he knew that he's going to marry him and she did nothing she just allowed neville godard to propose to her and marry her she did nothing she just sat back there and did nothing and neville did the job that's it. that is why even if your soulmate or your the person that you're trying to manifest doesn't know that you exist in this world you have to do nothing you don't have to gain their attention you just allow them assume that it's already yours it's already yours they are yours and allow them to come to you don't try to stand out in front of them don't try too hard in order to get their attention don't try too hard in order to be noticed by them don't try too hard just relax just relax when you relax when you just sit and do nothing you allow them to notice you the way you want them to notice you okay so don't act same don't act foolish just relax and do nothing they will come to you the only thing is you need to assume it's so concrete it's so concretely it's so absolutely that it's already yours like if i'm going to tell you that you have this index finger on your hand right you have this finger is it an assumption or is it a reality both of them i assume that i have a finger so that is why in reality i have a finger right Similarly if you assume that they are yours it will come back to you in your reality and if it takes some time maybe one month maybe two months it because you both are not ready to get to each other so maybe the other person is getting prepared by the divine and you are also getting prepared by the divine in order to be there so just have faith and when you see this happening with you just feel it feel in your imagination the strongest feeling possible when you are with that person feel it strongly and then let it go that's all you need to do assume and then leave assume and then leave detachment is the key faith is the key trust is the key and when all these combine together you do nothing it comes to you that's it that's all for today and i love you all and i will see you in the next episode